Today I'm going to talk about the Nixon Docker, as said. Uh, but before that, I'm 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 hoping. So what I what I really hate about this kind of giving talks in general, uh, even in live audiences, is that it's hard to get feedback immediately, right? So I'm going to try some technic new technical stuff, which I haven't before. So if it goes wrong, we'll just blame it <laughs> on the tech, uh, tech gods. Um, so if you can. Uh, uh, if you can go to this link, uh, I'll give it a second. Um, and it should tell you to um, that the uh, poll is going to start, which means uh, in this sense, I would like to know what your, um, what your background is, just so we give it a try whether this actually works. And you can uh, uh, write which kind of background where you're coming from, kind of programming, from programming sense. Um, this will give us so uh, kind of feeling, this will give me the feeling um, uh, of the audience. Uh, I give it, the, usually they said that I should give uh, around two minutes for this, uh, but we have Python, Agda, Haskell, okay. Uh, haven't used Agda before, but other than that, I've, I think I have you covered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but um, so in generally, I'll, while we wait, um, I'll talk a bit about just quickly um, about Tweak. Um, so as Ryan told you, we are a, a Nix consultancy, uh, not only Nix consultancy, but a consultancy. Uh, we help people with different types of problems when you need uh, we need to solve them we kind of most of the time we use Nix, Bazel and Haskell so that's where we are uh, coming from uh, we apply a lot of functional programming techniques in the in the solutions either this is just a exploration like a, doing a research for you or actually fixing some of the problems which you don't have time to. So, um, okay, we're getting answers. Oh, Nix is so big <laughs> in these letters. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna stop the poll. Um, and let's, I'm just gonna, uh, so we have JavaScript, Python, Haskell, Rust, Clash, haven't heard, need to try. Uh, Java, Swift, Scala, awesome. So we know what we're dealing with. Okay, so the next slide, I would like to know how how, invo uh, how, how much you know about Nix already. Just so I know at the kind of the expert level, I give it like five uh, levels. Uh, and as we will go, I'm also gonna show the responses. Um, so Nix, I know it's not the easiest thing to, to learn. Uh, lately, uh, this year, we've been working um, to improve the website, kind of at least this first step of the approachability. And we are very hard working on actually getting a better UI in the command line, especially. So you can expect really great things to, I mean, uh, you can expect things to improve from the UX part in the next coming year. Uh, so that is kind of the exciting year for us. Um, okay. Um, but other than that, so uh, there has also been a big, um, like the Nix language and the whole Nix ecosystem has a, some say it doesn't have good documentation. Some say it has really good documentation. I think the truth is in the middle. Once you learn Nix, then you can use the documentation and the manual. Uh, but what is definitely lacking, uh, I think we are all aware of it, is the uh, beginner guide, beginner guides or tutorial. And I think in the next half a year, this is going to be a big uh, focus of uh, of uh, of the marketing team which we have now in NixOS um, to kind of bring all those tutorials. So if you want to see some tutorial uh, being written, please contact me. I'm, I would really like to know what uh, would 
users find useful, you know? Even better, if you write it, uh, you know, I, I, get you a I give you a t-shirt. Not mine, but... <laughs> okay, so, so we have uh, two people uh, that need to be a bit introduced. I'll give it, I'll do a short introduction uh, somewhere so that we are all uh, on time, uh, um, kind of covered and understand so we can follow. Um, okay, so let's start uh, the talk. And I think we'll start with, uh, we are mostly all using Docker. Um, I know some people, especially because you're at this talk, you probably either have to use Docker um, or you, Use, like to use Docker. Either way, uh, I think this is more or less inevitable at this point. And we use Docker for a few different use cases. One is like just having some containers for some console commands, either to isolate, either this command, console commands are hard to install, like, or we use containers even further kind of to wrap our development environment because uh, we don't want to reinstall uh, our um, uh, or systems all the time. Uh, so if you, so this is like the usual use case, and also it makes it easy for bigger teams to share uh, development environments. Right? Completely uh, awesome use case. Um, and also some some companies actually, uh, especially for Linux, they try to use containers to de to de kind of deploy their. Um, the software, especially if the software is more targeted towards servers, right? So if you want to ship it uh, um, to different Linux distribution, this will, will, will quite, quite increase the cost. So Docker is a quite, uh, at least in, for in the beginning, it's quite middle ground here uh, for a project. Um, and containers, uh, like some use them to solve the scaling requirements, either using the microservices, I mean, opinions are on your own. I think it has a use case in some case, uh, in some areas. Uh, as every engineer, we like to over-engineer things. So I'm not going to judge here. Uh, I think all the use cases are valid. Uh, there might be even more. Um, the, probably there are more. Uh, this is just what I could find. So we definitely need to use Docker. I mean, these are quite compelling reasons. Uh, but for me, there is, uh, there are quite a few pain points as I was using it. Uh, and actually I also heard people using it. Um, they also complain about certain things. And I think the root of the cause for all these pain points is, is the Docker file. Um, uh, I mean, there are also other problems, but uh, kind of if I would have to select one, so I actually should call this slide, what is the pain point? Uh, so I would pick Docker file, uh, the format, how it works, and mainly, for example, one of the things that bothers me with the Docker file is that uh, the first three lines are usually apt-get update, uh, and you install some software, and then you actually need to clean up the cache. You need to know this. So the same goes with uh, pip install or uh, cabal, uh, SBT, SBT, and so on, right? So you need to know where the those tarballs that get downloaded, uh, so where the cache is being uh, stored. So you uh, so you remove it and clean it up, uh, so they have minimal um, Docker images. Because why would somebody need this in their Docker uh, image, especially the production one or the testing one? Uh, so all these little things are hard to do. Um, then one thing that uh, it's usually the uh, the last step you do is actually you start once you get the Docker image uh, working, so the content, then you start playing with the layers. Uh, so that where you try, and the reason why I try to play with the layers is because you want to um, uh, layers are the purpose of layers is uh, is to provide a caching mechanism. So if you split your Docker image in, uh, in correct amount of layers uh, at the right point, uh, at the right number of layers in the right uh, uh, kind of scope, then uh, your updates of applications will be just much faster because all the previous layers will be um, 
already cached. Now you need to do this manually, and this means you need to know uh, how all these tools work, where they write, when you should use them. So this is usually the last step you do, kind of optimizing the image. Um, so on the one side, you have really easy way in where a Docker file, it's a quite easy format to learn. Uh, but on the other side, if you want to do things um, in an optimal way, that's uh, usually uh, where the pain starts. Um, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's, it's harder than it should be. Um, another thing which I notice a lot of times is that it, are, the Docker images are hard to inspect. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, uh, maybe I should say they are harder to, in, to inspect than they should be in terms of um, you need to build a Docker image and then log in into it uh, or at least get access to it um, uh, to download the, the Docker image. And then um, you can run certain uh, inspection tools on it, uh, whether you have, uh, whether all your, the software there is compliant with certain <clears throat> license so that you're license compliant uh, or that um, there is no security bugs. Uh, and this for me is not needed because if this would be done in a proper way, and I'll show, of course, Nix does it proper way, <laughs> uh, it should be easy to inspect as well, right? So you could be, you could be uh, inspecting the images even before building. So is the, are the licenses up to... Uh, Compat is the license compatibility there? Um, or is there some things you need to either remove or replace in your dependency chain? Or is there some security fix which needs to be fixed, right? Um, this is usually quite hidden also behind your base image, um, which uh, in a bigger project, not maybe not for a small ones, but in a bigger project, they, they, what is a common uh, strategy here is that you create this base image uh, that you maintain uh, and everybody builds of this base image where you kind of contain all the, uh, uh, where you contain all the um, uh, best practices. So you need to use the uh, init system and so on, right? So like all the best practices are uh, kind of, Captured there. I think also the the one name for this is also golden images. Um, whatever the name, uh, I tend to find that you are either creating two small images, so um, so that the developers that are using this they need to um, do a lot of things themselves, or you create too big of an image, uh, which is then harder to update. Um, I think this kind of well, the reason why this is a problem, because uh, you know the images. Uh, so once you when you cannot update the images, um, then you hold your development kind of goes by, uh, goes uh, slows down, which unfortunately uh, almost always happens in a bigger organizations, um, but only few organizations actually recognize this ahead of time, and it's not of their fault. Like this this thing actually shows up only after a year or two. Of, um, of, of using Docker uh, across the organization. Um, and it's not only a technical problem, this is also um, a, a team that developed um, uh, and did some decisions of, of what goes into the base image actually most likely left or half of the team left. Um, there is new management and, you know, um, things change also in organization and it's easy to, uh, that the base image becomes stale. Uh, what I didn't mention with layers, it's also important part is layers, while they are good for caching, uh, they're also just linear. You can only build one on top of the, another, uh, which makes them like all the reordering um, kind of uh, removes the, removes the changes the cache keys for the layers. So you need to re-download them. Um, and also, yeah, uh, it would be nice if there would be, uh, this makes it, Docker images very, not so composable, right? So if you have comparing now with this base and golden image strategy, you can only go kind of one way uh, uh, with this base image. You can only attach layers on top of it uh, and you cannot really, um, 
let's say you have a uh, let's give it an example. You have a Docker image which, with Python, and you have a Docker image with um, what would be inside, let's say, Haskell, uh, and, and Scala, the third image, and you would say, like, hey, merge these three images, right? Um, that's just not supported. And it would be nice. Um, so, and the other thing is the Docker file is imperative. And I think uh, while it's easy to start, you can quickly, um, uh, you can quickly see the the moment you need something, uh, the moment your requirements grows, uh, you will hit the wall in some sense, right? It's it becomes much harder than it should be, especially maintaining it. So I kind of like this analogy where um, if you have a chef which you give instructions to, I, I much rather have a catalog where I select what I want and. Uh, instead of telling them how to cook my meal uh, and make sure that they clean up <laughs> in the kitchen, uh, in my kitchen, uh, I'd rather tell them like, oh, this is what I would like. And then everything else is, you know, will be done for uh, for best of their abilities, right? So the same thing, it would be nice if you could just say like, oh, in my Docker, I just want Python, um, Ruby, Scala, and a bunch of other packages. And please give it to me, right? And yeah, um, that's one of the things and I think uh, that really lacks uh, and hinders, uh, especially once you become not even an advanced Docker user, but even intermediate. Um, so with this, of course, uh, Nips comes to the rescue. So I will say that Nix and Docker share certain goals uh, what they try to achieve. So uh, with Nix, you do can you can have um, you know development environments. Uh, we don't use any containerization here. I will also show examples with this um, uh, later on. I think it's in two slides. Uh, so so in that sense, Nix and Docker are kind of competing. Uh, my opinion is Nix does better way, of course, uh, uh, but Docker on the other hand is more generally available. Um, so working development environment, uh, Nix has really a good strength of having uh, uh, support for multiple uh, programming languages. So when you need to work with Python, Haskell, Agda, you name it, JavaScript, you can all do it with one uh, package manager uh, or a build tool, if you want to call it. Um, you kind of get, once everything is uh, described with Nix, you get a continuous integration for free. Uh, in a similar fashion as you get with Docker, where you want your development environment, this, uh, the development image, you want to also run it on, um, on this continuous integration. Now, the same thing can be done uh, with Nix, just you know, no need for um, uh, any conter conter containers, right? Uh, we do this, um, we can say natively. Uh, we just provide you uh, with a development shell, so bash shell or z shell or fish shell. Uh, and we uh, provide you with the right tools in that environment that you can just continue. So we put things in your path uh, and make them available. And when you exit the shell, they kind of go away. So very, that's very good for working uh, to, for the development environment. And it just translates nicely to continuous integration. Uh, this kind of once every, once a thing is packaged in Nix, it's um, so you can get from from that image. You can either build the Docker images, which we're going to look, but this could be easy to um, uh, uh, e uh, Amazon EC2 uh, image. This can be deployed to Google Cloud. You, you name it. We can create Debian packages out of it, right? It's just. Once it's in Nix, we can shape it into any form you like. Uh, one of these is going to be Docker, as we'll see uh, in the demo soon. Um, an interesting feature, uh, which kind of comes with Nix, is that uh, you can always roll back. So um, that's kind of neat, because you never want to be in a non-working environment, right? Uh, so if you see that uh, an update came which broke uh, your development environment, you can always kind of go back, right? Uh, we'll see 
I'll hint at the example because this is not really a Nix, how Nix works, but uh, you will see how this could be possible. Uh, and this kind of brings another, which is like, it gives me the ability to experiment without the fear. So I, you can always be as good as a developer as um, you can actually be uh, exposed to certain problems. And the more you experiment, the better developer or engineer you can be. Um, and while I didn't have kids, <laughs> I was experimenting much more than now, but still, uh, even with less time uh, to experiment, uh, in the evening, I can try to replace and play with the different, um, uh, let's say, kernel modules. Uh, but then I know the next day, you know, my work starts uh, and I need to have a working machine. Nix allows you, right? So you can, because um, you can always roll back to the previous version. Um, and yeah, the, the nice thing that, one of the nicest thing is that we are on GitHub to contribute to our, uh, to Nix and Nix, it's just a pull request away. Um, this is, you know, on contrary to some of the Linux distributions. Um, so, uh, this is normal for, let's say, more modern uh, workflows. Uh, but yeah, it's just a pull request away. So we get a lot of um, contributions. So if you try to add a package to Debian, there is a bit of, uh, it's a bit involved process. Um, so I think I also owe to the new, uh, to the people who are new to Nix, because uh, I didn't answer what is Nix, right? And I think this is a bit... Uh, depends <laughs> who you ask, but I will tell you what Nix can be. Uh, depends what you need. So Nix in itself is a um, some like to sell it as a package manager, so it can be a replacement for Homebrew. Nix can be uh, can provide you um, also with uh, with a development environment, so it could be an all, um, similar to Bazel. Uh, and at the same time, Nix is like the, the, the configuration that you write uh, in is actually called Nix language for lack of a better name. So a lot of Nix. And on top of this idea, so Nix can run on any um, uh, POSIX compliant uh, system. So Mac OS, uh, Linux, uh, and even FreeBSD, although support there is a bit uh, lacking, but growing. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, on top of this package manager, which you can install alongside in a safe manner, uh, alongside any other package manager, uh, you can also, there is also a thing called Nix OS, um, which is a Linux distribution. So if you want to run, a, uh, or, a Linux distribution, which is on GitHub, and it's easy to contribute. That's, uh, I think NixOS is the easiest to contribute to, although I cannot, uh, I'm um, biased, of course. <laughs> so now we know what Nix do, just uh, kind of what can, what you can expect from Nix. Um, but now let's focus on Nix and uh, Nix and um, uh, Docker. So uh, in the demo, uh, which I hope will work. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna do a short introduction. I think it's if I timed it correctly, it should be less than four minutes. Uh, to Nix, just because if we're gonna read the Nix files, we need this introduction. Uh, then we're gonna learn how to build differently, uh, how to build different Docker images, and what are the what are the buttons that we can tweak uh, how we build Docker images with Nix. Uh, then we're gonna uh, inspect Docker images. I mean, this is kind of gonna be the same process, and then we're gonna take Nix and Docker to the to the limits. Like we'll we'll actually we're not gonna take it, but we're gonna check out how this can be extended and then uh, how people already extended it. Um, so yes, so here I would like you um, please still go back to that link which I gave you in the beginning. Uh, it's also at the top. Uh, and if you have any questions, um, 
uh, please ask me. I'm going to be monitoring this uh, this screen here uh, as I give the uh, the demo. Uh, okay, so. Um, Let's see how does this work. Uh, I need some help from the organizers. I uh, I see what is going to be the problem now. What's going on? Uh, what can we uh, you, yeah. Okay, uh, do you see my uh, terminal or not no, really? Please. Not at the moment. No. No. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. So I need to switch because <clears throat> my. Let's see. And I don't even see my. Yeah. We can see the mouse though, and the uh, slide keeps resizing slightly. So yeah. So it was quickly. Um, okay. In the worst case, I'll just have to can uh, rejoin the meeting and share the new screen. I don't know how to do it differently. Rock, I, I, I do have a question in the Twitch. If you uh, let me know when it's a good time to ask you via yeah, Twitch. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because we 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 uh, everyone who's on Twitch, feel free to ask your questions on Twitch, and I'll read them out to Rock whenever he's at a good point of stop, so I don't disturb his yeah. presentation. Oh, um, can you actually one of the organizers actually cancel my screen share? Maybe then. I'll oh, be you, able you need to reshare it. You're not able to do it yourself. Yeah, because the all the. Yeah, my i3 man window manager actually hides all of these options. Ah, uh, yeah. Might be because of this. So, oh, Got it. now I will be able to reshare. Let's give it a try. I didn't know I could do that. That's great. <laughs> I'll try to interrupt your presentation regularly. I <laughs> <laughs> shared my own screen. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so That's if so I'm good. incorrectly, that should be now, you should be seeing my terminal, right? Yeah, yeah perfect. Yep. Okay. So um, what was the question? Uh, let's first answer it before we go. Yeah, the, que the question uh, was, uh, how can I trust the security of Nix packages? Debian, I know, gets a lot of scrutiny. That's yeah. it. Okay. So uh, the security part. Um, yeah. So first, there is the security you can do, of course. Uh, with Nix, you have a bit more, um, bit better in introspection. Uh, of course, uh, it's hard to get to the level of where Debian is, uh, being Nix in Nix OS, so young project. Uh, but we have a security team um, and the security processes in place. Um, I will say like this: if you are, uh, and if you look at how. This does not speak really to the um, to the how secure uh, distribution is, but uh, given that the uh, that we have the security processes, and that if, that you trust that the newer software is less likely to be vulnerable, uh, I know it's not always the case, but uh, given this too, uh, we are our packet set uh, in NixOS. It's I think one of the most up-to-date, uh, I think it's called uh, on the website, repology.org. Uh, you can actually compare this with, uh, with different distributions. And I think we rank either one or two in um, either the most up-to-date or even the most with the most se uh, big set of packages that we maintain. Uh, and a lot of this is all automated, right? So uh, our CVS are be uh, being resolved. Uh, we have a security team, which I said is in place, and there is also the kind of security team, part of security team, which takes um, kind of bug reports uh, and kind of solves them in a, in a private and does announcements. So there, there are processes. Uh, we are far from, I mean, far from. We are not yet there where Debian is, I think, uh, but this does not mean uh, you cannot use it in production. Um, I would say that many companies already do this, uh, do run it. It's a production ready software. Um, I would say we are somewhere where Arch Linux is. That would be my, um, my guess. Uh, 
Also, personal opinion, I find some comfort in being able to look at the hashes of each package on where, where, which GitHub hash it relates to. Yeah, 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 exactly. So this comes yeah. to, you can introspect what changes. Uh, changes. Uh, also, another thing, a lot of CVEs that get reported are actually not even possible with Nix, um, just due to the, the way how Nix works. So the model, how Nix works, and I, this would take another talk, so um, I hope you will have it in the future. Um, but how Nix works uh, kind of restricts uh, certain problems. So uh, an example would be, um, what was the, the fun one? The node has almost the most fun ones. Uh, the Bitcoin, uh, that was a new owner became uh, and started mining the, uh, the um, uh, started mining the Bitcoins or other uh, currencies. Um, this is not possible with Nix. So once you have it with Nix, all your developers are kind of safe. Now, I, we sandbox all our builds, so this cannot happen. There is no exit out. So uh, this one way of securing uh, your setup. So um, this one aspect of reproducibility that Nix provides uh, is exactly that. Um, so with this, I'll continue. So we'll go quickly through um, through the README. Uh, there we go. This is the how Nix looks like. Uh, in 26 lines. Uh, so in Nix, this is going to be a comment. Uh, uh, so everything with a uh, after hash. Uh, we have nulls, we have strings. We have multi-strings, multi-line strings. Okay, everything. And these are the uh, two single quotes and the strings are double quotes. We have integers, we have floats. Um, we have, um, uh, bool of course, Boolean options. We have lists, so which are, uh, you can put any number, any type of, um, uh, of data inside. Uh, and then we have also, uh, we call this attribute set. So where you're coming from, you might call this a hash. You might call it a dictionary, um, an object, JavaScript, right? So, uh, the syntax is you provide the key, uh, you provide the value, and then you uh, equals in between, and then you ended up with a semicolon. So Nix is one of those languages where you have a semicolon in the end. Um, so then we have another way how you can construct, because a lot of things in Nix is just uh, attribute sets uh, all the way down, like one inside the other. Uh, so we have quite a lot of conveniences. So for example, this part here, we have a nested attribute set can actually be defined quite nicely with the dot syntax. So you can provide, uh, you can create, you, with this you just say that A is an attribute set with the B element in it of value one, right? Um, another example, oh, I'm going to scroll. Okay, now let's refocus. Another example here in the middle of the screen is called recursive attribute sets. Um, this means that you can refer recursively to your own elements. In this case, B is one at the end. Um, that's also showcasing the laziness. So all the attributes are lazy, which means that if you don't specify, they won't be um, evaluated, right? Uh, so we can have really large attribute sets and um, the evaluation will still be fast because you don't have to read let's say 100,000 lines of uh, Nix code, you just read, I mean, read, you don't have to evaluate 100 times lines of code. You can only evaluate what you're using. Uh, it's a really cool aspect. Uh, I, I, everybody coming from, pardon, function languages will uh, understand, uh, will kind of have an intuitive, uh, uh, will intuitively understand the benefits of this. Um, then we have um, uh, uh, let, uh, so the local variables in, uh, inside the let in. There is a typo, because this should actually fin uh, end up with the semicolon. This number equals one, semicolon is missing. Uh, clearly, I was writing this in a hurry. Uh, but this means that number is then available 
in, in a scope after in, uh, which means you can use it in an attribute set uh, uh, that comes after. And then B equals one at the end when you evaluate it. Uh, this is an interesting thing. Like it's a, uh, I'm, why I'm going through all of this is because I want to prepare you reading Nix. Um, so when we say you inherit, uh, you inherit B, uh, you inherit from B, you inherit A, this kind of, this, this is the syntax. This actually means that the, you would write it, uh, you could also write it like this. Uh, so A equals B dot A, right? Um, then we have certain functions, built-ins, uh, which provide you with map. Uh, this is get environment, so you can see what's in the environment. Okay, going further. Uh, this is to, to have. Um, uh, this is how we define functions. So we have an add function. We have first argument a. We have a second argument b, and then this is a return expression. Um, we're going to see how this all fits together, right? This is just examples. And this is an example how we call uh, a function. So nothing fancy, uh, similar to how Haskell Elm uh, does it. Uh, this is, you can also, an argument can be an attribute set. So if an argument is an attribute set, you can actually provide a default values. So let's say in this case, you can say add two, and this is of course, again, the typo. And let's fix it immediately because I will forget it. So we had different typo. Uh, this needs to be like this. So there we go. So we are here. Uh, when you call add two, you can only provide the one of the arguments and then the second one will just use the default value or you can override it. Um, the next thing um, is you can import different parts of code so we can compose them. So not everything has to be in one file. Um, this kind of um, imports uh, the default .nix from the current directory. Another thing is you can also import um, the whole Nix packet set. So if you install Nix, uh, you, it will also install this Nix packet set for you. So we can, which is the Nix packages, uh, uh, like a shortened version, uh, abbreviated version. So um, in Nix packages, we will use it. You can find many, many packages. Um, and here we have the uh huh this actually this nix packages because it's it's written in this with the uh, less than and um, greater than it will actually select it from nix pad uh so once you install nix uh just look at the nix pad how it's being uh set and you will see there inside this nix pad uh environment variable there is the nix packages equals part and that's where the, which this is the pad that is gonna be used. Um, so once you import it like this and you s assign it to a packages variable, you can refer to, a, which is an attribute set, of course, as I said, everything in X is attribute set, uh, replace my word attribute set for your more familiar one. So dictionary object and so on. So you can access Redis by just calling packages.redis. Um, there is also, a, a lot of people like to use this with statement. Um, so if you need to list certain list of packages, let's say your dependencies, you want you want you want to sometimes avoid uh, writing the all the packages all the time. So this is equal. So either uh, so we could say here also Python uh, what I said Node JS and so on. Uh, and this is how you, uh, how the templating uh, of the string works in Nix. So uh, I will now go to the REPL and I'm actually going to show you what happens now. So Nix REPL. Uh, oh, that's a bit too big. Okay. So we said packages equals import 
mix packages just to get the all the packages set and you will see Redis uh, becomes available. And for a moment, I'm gonna show you what this, uh, so what this um, package is, is actually a derivation. And the derivation is a type of attribute set with a certain structure, right? Um, so in this, the output of derivation is this file, uh, uh, which, which ends up with, let me put it just a bit so we can see the ending, which ends up with DRV. And this is um, an instruction how to build this package, uh, which is then uh, consumed by Nix. The process of getting from Nix the language to the derivation is called evaluation. Right, and then to kind of uh, to actually build Redis, uh, you can we can use this trick, which is uh, you can interpolate. Um, so this is how you could, uh, and this would be the so uh, this will be the installed package. So you see the difference. Uh, and the process from getting from derivation, so from this part here to this part, is called realization. So that, or because you're basically um, going online, fetching the right thing, checking the SHA that it's as expected, uh, getting all the dependencies, running the build steps, everything in a sandbox, and then writing it here. Now, to the new users, to Nix, this will be a bit confusing because everything is behind this really long hash. Um, this is a. Um, this is so that you can actually install packages side by side, alongside. So they usually an installing of Redis would actually happen in slash user, um, but I'm gonna leave this to. Uh, uh, so you can install them side by side, uh, and this actually where the the true power comes from, Nix and. It takes some time to explain it, and um, you know, just playing without with it. Um, but it's not a hard concept. It's all kind of simple, pure functions. Uh, now, Nix in itself, how I like to describe it, is a JSON with a, a weird JSON with a, with functions. That's kind of it, with few sprinkles on top. This, with this, I will end up the explanation because I could go here for another hour to explain it. Uh, and it's really hard not seeing people uh, whether they understand it. So use the link before, which I send you for questions and just, you know, just write your uh, frustrations even if you, uh, if you have it. Um, there is no questions, so I'll continue. Um, so the next point, we're gonna now actually look at how Nix can provide uh, development environment. So for this purpose, I cr I, uh, I created, now we're gonna start reading Nix. I created uh, a small example with the develop my development environment, which requires to have Redis. So we're gonna look at Redis from all different angles, also then inside the Docker. So in the first line, we will see that um, Everything in Nix is an expression, so this is an expression. And this is, uh, if you separate it a bit, it's a function, this, this gives it away, with one argument, uh, which has in this, arg uh, with, with un one argument, within this argument is a, is a um, attribute set, so we can de define default value. And this is a quite common in Nix. Um, with, uh, later on, uh, we can see we have this let in. So we put, oh, for, that was typo. So in this sense, in this, we actually do make shell, this would be equal, right? Just reminding you what this is. So this would be the same. Um, and this provides make shell in, in this scope here below so that we can call it. Uh, put some spaces. So I'm kind of trying to separate a bit the logic. And this make shell is actually just a function that we have. We have lots of convenient functions. And this is to provide you uh, a development shell. For development shell, we give it, in this case, I give it a name, although it's not mandatory, but you probably would like to have a list of packages in this, um, in this development shell. We call them built inputs. 
for the reasons um, that you will understand once you understand the, 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 how Nix works. Of course, you're, you're probably already now familiar with this with statement. So I could replace this also with, um, by removing this and I could replace it with packages. That would all be the same, okay? So in order to build this, you say, uh, I mean, to enter this development shell, you will just enter Nick shell. And it will fetch the Redis. Uh, and now Redis is available. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's Redis server, right? There we go. So we have Redis. It's of course in this um, weird path, but once I exit, um, once I exit the, the, the shell and now I'm back to my normal environment, I can say which Redis server and it's not there. So imagine you can do the same thing with Python and um, for the purpose of this, let's just edit, uh, let's say Python, right? Uh, packages go. Hope this will not take too long. But the same thing is, I don't have Python and I don't have Go. Okay. And I will uh, type Nick shell and it's downloading Go. And you will see, I want to show another thing. So you will see that it's not downloading Python uh, in all of its dependencies. And this is because in some other projects, I'm using Python as well. So it's using all these caches. Um, so that means that if I exit now again and I re-enter, the, there is nothing to, uh, um, to install. So this kind of gives this uh, declarativeness uh, over imperativeness. So with all the other tools, Docker also, you get, you need to prove, you need to say which commands you need to run uh, and to do something. So there we have it. Um, I think this is a nice example how to uh, get up and start it and just benefiting. Um, yeah, uh, benefiting um, uh, Nix right away. So you can take away all the uh, um, what's homebrew, uh, all the other tools, and even you can replace Docker this way with Nix. This is to replace it. Now, the next thing I want to show you is actually how to build Docker images with Nix. So, because Nix is a Docker is a build tool, we can we also have a function in Nix um, that can build it, right? So, a function for us is that uh, it's a recipe, might be for uh, with other systems, uh, so or instructions. And I'm going to show you. So we're going to build uh, is it Docker, yeah. So we're going to do the similar example. Um, but here it's a link to documentation. Uh, so the similar example. So we have again the function, uh, the uh, function signature at the top, which usually we just provide uh, the default set of packages which are available on my system. Um, and then we have uh, we we kind of import the built image from the oh sorry. So here we go. So we import the built image in this line, and then we use it after in. Uh, this lets us, uh, yeah, and this is uh, a build, it's a function uh, that will build us a Docker image. There are a few things that we can provide. One is the name and the tag. I've called this Redis and latest, uh, Redis tag, uh, and give it a tag latest. Then we provide contents of the package images uh, here. It's a search. You can search among all the packages and select ones. Uh, again, hope you're not confused with this with statement, but this would be the same as this. Um, then you provide the configuration. Uh, and I, before, I, I told you that, you know, Nix is like, um, Nix is like JSON of, uh, of some sort, just a different syntax. So if we would do this and this, we get much closer to the uh, JSON, right? Um, so in the same fashion, we, you can actually export this, data, this structure into JSON. So we can just follow the, 
the Mobi uh, do the Docker image specification. So you can provide the, the immediate command to run, the working directory volumes. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's neat. <laughs> so that you can do, you can do with this exactly the same as you can with um, declarative approach in Docker file. There are of course other options, uh, which is I'll explain created now just a bit later. Uh, but then you can create also say to build upon already existing um, image, which you can provide in two, two different ways. So either using, using via Docker export, or actually there is another function which pulls the image into the Nix, uh, but you need to provide the hash. Um, if, the, if this image provides multiple uh, kind of images inside, if this export provide multiple images, you can actually select it. All the, otherwise, it's just going to use one, which is the normal use case. Uh, then you have this run as root, which works in a similar fashion as you would expect run to uh, in Docker file, uh, with only exception that you're not um, you cannot access uh, internet, so it's a bit more sandboxed. Uh, which limits you in a bit, but uh, there are other ways how to download things into uh, in a re reproducible manner, right? In Nix. And the downside is that the re requirements uh, requires a KVM device to be to be there. Uh, but other than that, that would be how to extend it. And let's and that's the end of the file already. Um, so in reality, kind of to repeat, we have a build image function which takes one argument, which is an attribute set, which has a name, which then you provide a name, a tag. You provide a list of packages in a declarative way. You don't say install this, install this, install this, but you say, give me a Docker image with a Redis. And then you also provide in a declarative way, a uh, command, a uh, configuration. So what will this be started? So let's give it a go how this will work. Docker, no, Nix. They will use a different command, this time Docker uh, Nix build. And we will, and then you provide which file you want to build. Uh, and let's see. It's going to take some time because I clear my cache. Now, important to know about this thing. Uh -huh. So it's already built. Docker uh, load. Uh -huh. Maybe to show this first. So the result of Docker will be stored into the result. Um, and you can see it creates a symlink uh, to the Nix store. So this is a tarball at the end, and which is the exported um, a Docker image. So you can load it using this command. There we go. And you will see there is only one layer, right? Uh, which is something you want sometimes, but we'll see what, the, but which is something that you don't want if you want to have a good caching. Well, there is a next step, but let's, in, until now, let's just see this image is Nix Redis latest and it's 165 megabyte. And you can see here, it was built 51 years ago, um, which is because, um, Everything in Nix is um, uh, reproducible. So we, in the, the content of this tarball uh, actually includes a timestamp. And we always, even everything that is in slash Nix store, we like to keep it at the ep epoch plus one times timestamp um, so that it's reproducible. Now, this is not sometimes you, uh, this is not something you want. So what you, what can be done is you can disable this with this created, and you just say create it now. Oh, where is Docker built? It will rebuild the whole uh, image. I'll grab a, uh, I cannot even grab uh, water so fast. Docker load, now we load it. Docker images. And we can see this one was built 16 seconds ago. 
So with this, you can gain this functionality. So it, it's not so surprising to your um, to your other colleagues uh, if they start using your image. So um, this is how we build Docker images with Nix with one layer. Okay. Now Nix on its own um, knows a lot about already at the build time, because we describe this in a very a declarative fashion, already knows what are its dependencies. Um, that's why what can be done also is we can be smart about it uh, when building Docker image and automatically create layers. So this would be an example of a, of a layered image. So the difference from before is that I added few um, arguments to our uh, expression for this uh, for this example. Uh, you will see why later. Uh, but the important part we are using now a different uh, function. It's called built layered image. Um, you can see I use here now the inherit as well, which is coming from uh, from our arguments. So this would be the same as name equals name. That would be, so these two lines are equi equivalent. Um, we have, we kind of keep the tag latest. Again, contents is the same. We config is the same. Um, the created options, but it has a bit less options this. Um, so we can have, uh, there is a limit. Uh, in Docker that it only supports up to 128 layers. Uh, and I think just to be on the same safe side, we only allow to set um, uh, up to 125 layers. Um, and then also um, by default, we just set it to 100 a bit, uh, a bit more reserved. So if you wanted to cache even more, you can just you know, set it to 125 layers. We will see this in action very soon. Um, and even some older versions support even only 40, 42 layers. So depends. Uh, it also provides certain kind of run-like options that you can um, um, kind of imperatively in a bubble, in a sandbox, mess up with the, um, uh, with the file structures there. So... This would be it. Let's build it. So it's the same as before. The only thing we change is actually, well, we change a bit the structure of how Nix code is, but the real change is only this function. Okay. So let's say Nix build. And this was the layered.nix. So docker layered.nix. We will build it. And while it will be building, uh, there we go. You will see it will build, so it's creating many layers. So it will create 65 layers. And in each layer, it's only one, uh, one package, right? So each layer will, be, will contain one package and it tells you which package is in each layer. Um, uh, and, it's, and it tries to figure it out so the last layer is probably the Redis, of course. Uh, it tries to figure out by the popularity context uh, contest um, what to, uh, so if there would be more than 65 packages um, needed to build Redis, um, more than 100, uh, it will actually start grouping them, right? And it will do this by the popularity context between packages, so who has the most, um, uh, how you call this, uh, pointers pointing to it. So who, who's the most used ones? And those will um, uh, kind of group together. So again, it built, this was the output. Let's see it. Uh, it's created, the, again, the result. So you can see this is the same as the output there. We load it again. Uh, and now you will see it will load 50, uh, no, 65 layers, right? But they are much smaller, uh, which might actually take longer 
on initial import or initial load, but every, every subsequent import will actually be much faster. So uh, this might, like with time, you will actually, on your second update of your, let's say, project, you will actually already benefit with this. And you can see everything was done declaratively. And because the, the Nix knows about the structure and dependencies ahead of time, it can actually per partition the layers appropriately. And there is no knowledge needed uh, how to layer things so that it's going to be optimal. Um, so we loaded it. Let's look at it. Docker images. So there we go. Uh, we, this one, yeah, so this one. So the layered image completely at the bottom. That's it. Um, the same size, just more layers. Um, okay, and the next thing which I wanted to show you is by default, you know, this is actually, uh, we can actually do much better size-wise than this. So I, for example, I would first pull the Redis image. I think this is, by default, this is the, the Redis image, which is Debian. You can see that it has six layers, which most likely they uh, carefully align them. Um, and for the fun of it, I will also download the Alpine image, which is known for being really small. OK. Let's compare them. And you will see quite some differences. So even the Docker image, it's already quite optimized. And it's actually smaller than ours. Um, the, the 165, which you will say, like, oh, you know, uh, that's a bit too much. And this one, Alpine, is actually even smaller, right? Because it's statically compiled. But at one point, this is not a fair game. Um, first, because those images uh, are already, those packages even, are already specialized to be the, as small as possible. Um, if, you if you would take um, like a regular Debian and check for the, all the dependencies that are for Redis, uh, you will see that it actually goes above 200, 250, I think, something. Um, so, but I understand uh, that, uh, that they optimized it uh, uh, because they want to, but you know we can do as well with Nix, which is oh, minimal. Um, and there we go. Uh, what we are going to do now is reuse the Docker layered image from before, but provide a different. Um, uh, different Redis, like a small version of Redis. So um, there we go. So similar, um, what we need is actually here only the packages. Actually, we yeah, uh, this we can remove. Um, so we import the um, uh, we import. So this here will import the code, the function from the Docker layered image. And just for the com uh, completeness, I will split it and show the Docker layer uh, uh, code at the, at below the, the split. OK, so below here, that's the Redis layered. OK, now we overwrite certain things. I mean, we provide different, um, we provide the uh, different arguments to this function. So kind of going back, we provide the packages. So this is again, the same as this, just for the completeness. Uh, we provide different name because I want to call this additionally the minimal version. And then what we do, now I'm remove, I will gonna remove the previous, uh, the split below. So now we provide a custom version of Redis, which has few things, we remove few things. Um, each, each package in Nix packages uh, has this override attribute, um, which, you know, it's, uh, it's, it allows us to hook into the build system, uh, the declaration of how to build things 
uh, with the different, um, yeah, how to differently build things and uh, kind of keep the same build of Redis, except use different, um, different uh, parameters. So in our case, to be, make it fair, we will actually build it without the system D. Most likely that contributes to the full size. Now, Redis, uh, Redis in Nix packages is actually compiled with systemd because you know most of the time you use it on NixOS, which uses systemd. So that is a same default for us. We can remove it. Uh, we will also do as Alpine does it. We'll build um, uh, a static version of it. Um, uh, so we will. We just need. We just need to just need to provide the. Uh, these flags, um, and we will remove certain, certain um, how do you call it, uh, certain tools, which binaries, which are actually not needed in, in a production, right? So you strip it down. So all these things are actually I, I got it from uh, from Alpine how they build it, right? I just translate it into Nix, um, and. As much as time you have, you can reduce uh, the images, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the sizes of the installations. So let's see how this compares. Docker, no, Nix, build Docker, and now we will use the minimal, the one, the file that I just showed you. It's gonna again build, uh, do the build. Uh -huh, it's gonna recompile the Redis uh, with a, uh, in a static manner. Now I think it's gonna be enough time to for me to sip the, to get a drink. And if there is any questions, um, yeah, I think now we are already at the point where you can come up with them and we can revisit. I think I've been talking really long now. <laughs> I apologize. I, I missed the note where uh, where I should be stopping. There's no like. Oh, it's already done. <laughs> Oh, it's, oh, damn it. No, I didn't. Okay, I need to have a, a sip now. Okay. Um, things are working really fast today. Um, but let's load it. So Docker, let maybe just ex explore. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, only one layer from pets, yeah. Docker load the same as before, but you will see this Docker image has actually more uh, more layers, right? Uh, actually, it has only two layers now. Um, one being um, uh, one being this statically compiled Redis, and I assume the other one being everything uh, uh, that's starting. I think it would be probably Muscle or something. Uh, we can check what the, what's inside layers, but now that we can compare it, uh, I think we bring it to two megabytes, right? So if you want to go minimal, you can go really minimal, right? That's what I want to tell you. Um, by default, you'll get a really composable and easy to use uh, package packages uh, Docker image. Um, uh, but if you need to get to go minimal, you can go. And just to prove it that this really runs, um, which one? I mean, it's not configured, so it's gonna probably error. But you know, it is running, so the Redis conf is missing. But other than that, up and running. Okay. So with this. Um, yeah, I think uh, if there is, a, uh, I would open the door for questions before I move to the last bit, which is kind of what people did with with this system, how they use it. Yeah, so there's one question, which is, um, are the code examples that you've shown here available somewhere for the uh, audience? Not yet, but uh, please, ping me or I mean I will make them available uh, I will don't know where to I guess we can on this uh, meetup we can announce it 
Uh, yeah. We can announce on the meetup page. Yeah, I will also post it on the on my Twitter. So my handle is Garbas, so my surname. Uh, so you can find me there. I'll also post it. Uh, either way, I'll make it uh, once I fix. I think I fix now the typos with this giving this talk, so it should be good. I I have a small question for you, which is unrelated to your talk actually. What yeah. font do you use for your terminal? <laughs> it's a fabulous font. Oh. Uh, I don't know. It's been two years. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, um, I will send you this link as well. It's Thank probably you. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Because <laughs> uh, everything you like the same way as we configure, you know, uh, Docker, right? Which is can really be beneficial, like uh, for a company. You know, the Nix people usually go insane and actually configure their whole system uh, <laughs> using Nix. So then it's reproducible yeah. and I can actually share it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Is any of you actually, are, are you using Nix to build Docker images or you did it before? Uh, yeah, I have a done this before. At work or just uh, personally? Uh, it's just for personal lecture for, for my learning process in a sense. Uh -huh. yeah, just yeah. Kubernetes and those things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. So to kind of go further, um, but please interrupt me if there are any questions, they show up. But to kind of go further, I want you to go, there is this project, which I find it really cool. It takes the whole idea of Nix and um, Nix and um, building Docker images to the whole new level. Uh, and Nixery.dev is the, uh, is the page and it's actually a docker registry so what it does is because it, you kind of a lot of times you just want a docker shell a docker with with certain packages inside and this could actually be defined um uh in a with uh, how it's called this in a in the name of a uh, of a docker image and then if the registry is aware how to build Nix, um, it will actually just build it on the fly, right? Or it will just reuse certain those, uh, those layers. Uh, in this example, I will, uh, I will get a Docker image with shell, a bash in this case, git, htop, go, jdk, sbt. And uh, please provide any other uh, package, I dare you. <laughs> Just shout it out. Yeah, Python? I don't know. There we go, Python. Although we already know this kind of works. So it's unable to find this image locally, of course. Um, but let's see how many Docker, how many um, layers is this going to take? I assume. This is going to take a yeah, bunch of layers. And I'm scrolling up. Yeah. Huh. I see it's, uh, it was not wise to scroll because it's, but I would say it's around 100. There we go. The last 30 you can see on the screen. So this generates on the fly Docker images. Um, and there is a lot of things that can be reused. Uh, this is a nice way for to let everybody in your own company actually, you know, use Docker Compose and then just provide a name with, uh, in a declarative way, give, give me a Docker image with Git and HTOP. Um, there we go. And we entered, so which Python? Ah, there is no which, but Python is there. Right. Uh, what else do we have? Go. No? It, it go get. So we can see the structure. 
it also creates all these links. Uh, so in our case, let's find Python. Ah, here we go, SBT, it's right here, uh, which is again the sim link to, um, sim link to, how it's called, um, uh, to the next store. Okay. There we go, and this is a sim link, I suppose. Share, SBT, no, go, there we go, here you have it. I guess we will have to put this in a path, but um, yeah, I find this extremely uh, exciting that it can be as easy as setting up the name. So you can just avoid writing Docker files. Yeah, I think this would be it for my talk. If there are any questions, I'd love to ask them, either related to Docker or just in general about Nix. Um, I would ask the organizers to stop my screen sharing because I can't. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I can't stop my screen sharing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, great talk. Um, we don't have any questions in Twitch chat at the moment. Um, I haven't seen any on that. That website that you're using for your presentation is very cool. I've never seen that before. Yeah, um, yeah I just give it a try. It worked. I go, we got one question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Also good. It was just somebody said thank you. Whoever it was, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, I think don't use Nix, like don't use too much of Nix, go really slow. That's what would be my recommendation. I think uh, it's a new thing. For, like for many people, it's a new thing. Um, don't overburden them, that would be my advice. I did it many times the wrong way and just tried to like, oh, here you go, Nix, Nix, Nix. And I was like, okay. Uh, I, I, we do have one question, Rock. Uh, does this yeah. work with Nix Flex, Flex yet? Uh -huh. Yes. It's just um, Flex is just another. Um, so the Flex, what they give you is certain structure of, uh, for, they will provide a certain structure for the default, uh, for the Nix com the new Nix command which we're working on. So that UX part which I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, they will provide this structure and the other part, they will provide pinning of the Nix packages. So I was a bit lying. This kind of exposes me. <laughs> um, uh, I just simplified it. Let's put it this way for the sake of uh, this talk is that when you import Nix packages that comes from your environment, right? Uh, and whatever it's in your environment, it's going to be then uh, used in your Nix expressions. Uh, and usually Nix people like to pin this and they are, this is very um, kind of manual job. And I was already talking too much, I think. Uh, and I shortened it a bit with explanation. With Nix flakes, you will actually get this locking of Nix packages or any other flakes. Uh, and you could share your code and it will become really much easier to make truly reproducible uh, builds. It's already possible now. It's just going to be easier later. What is the general experience with the Nixon Doco ecosystem, like a usual you know, Kubernetes or other Docker related huh. ecosystem? Uh, what, uh, uh, the Docker related. So, yeah. Um, I'll put this way. Uh, I think, so let's say similar to, um, I think nobody's really happy with the YAML, writing YAML for Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. I think this is like a common pain and everybody's building on top of it. Um, what Nix can do for you is uh, you can build Docker images itself and then you can reuse the same language to also configure it. And, you know, doc, YAML is JSON and you saw it already today that Nix is JSON, uh, so to say. It looks like JSON and there is a function to export your structure. So 
uh, it composes much better uh, than, well, YAML does not compose. Uh, it's quite it's static, except uh, everybody's then building on top of YAML and saying like, oh, if you do these three magic words, then they it, create, it loops over or something like this. Um, so in this, I would say that, um, yeah, uh, it can, rep it's like, it's one tool for, for the, your whole job, mm -hmm. which I would say it takes time to learn it. So that's a cost definitely, but on the long run, it will save you time. It's, it reduces the complexity. Mm -hmm. right. So you had mentioned some, uh, at the beginning of your talk, some new, um, like interfaces to Nix. I'm kind of curious if you have a preview of what these might look like. Uh, yeah, uh, how they look like, there, there is nothing. We're going through the process. They're going to be slightly, I mean, you can already see them in the master branch if you build it, or um, I think we're updating as Twig. We are on this course, on the NixOS discourse. Uh, we are posting our updates. Um, Ilko, the co-worker and the founder, uh, founder, it's called right now, the author of Nix. Uh, uh, he's working tire tirelessly uh, on, on, this, on this front. Um, so he's updating everybody through this. Uh, we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Because uh, like, the UX only comes with, with enough feedback, the good UX, right? So we are aware of that. Um, but too much feedback, you don't get nothing done. So balancing this. Um, so I think we, we are aware, I'll put it this way, we're aware that there is many things that they need to be polished. And this is like the first, we're trying to um, polish the raw edges. Um, and I think, let's put it this way, in a month, you're going to see uh, these initial ideas being there to be kind of out there to be discussed. Awesome. Uh, um, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, yeah. So uh, you can, I guess, anything you otherwise want to add with, and then um, I guess we'll be done for the day. Yeah. Um, to end with, hmm. I'll reemphasize, don't expect your colleagues that never heard of Nix to like it. Uh, you would probably do the same, and I would do the same. Um, it takes time. Uh, learning things takes, you know, you have to be in the right moment. Um, uh, and you need to be receptive, and even, you know, you need to have time, and you need to care about it. Um, show them small things. I think what takes Nix apart from everybody else and the Nix people don't share, uh, don't cherish this and, uh, enough is Nick Shell. Nick Shell is amazing. That's it. Um, so show them that. Uh, don't expect much. Uh, if any company out there that uh, would like to have more on hand presentation with their technologies, don't feel shy to contact me. We also as Twig do this. Um, you know, these are small, I'll be honest, there is no cheating. Like we are consultancy, we do Nix things. Um, if we get your company to use Nix, this is a potential client for us, of course. But I think in generally, we'll, we are just happy that people are using Nix because I think uh, kind of looking forward, and this is also why I joined Twig is, let's say we need to improve how we build software. That's, that's it. And I think Nix is, or Nix philosophy at least, uh, although I think Nix is the f go f uh, is going to be the way forward, because uh, I definitely want to write software that for a plane that I'm going to be flying, and if that happens, I don't trust npm install, so it's <laughs> to be Nix. That's it. <laughs> and, and I assume everyone noticed that uh, Rock is a Vim fan over Emacs, yeah? Uh, Emacs. <laughs> nice. Just trying to just trying to add some controversy to so that this talk becomes popular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Emacs. I, I I tried. I tried. Uh, I guess I was too late. You know, I learned it too late. Uh, I was aware of it too late. I'll put it this way. And then I was already you know crippled with Vim. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, 
thank you very much for giving the talk. It was yeah, excellent. thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for the talk. It was very cool. Yeah, yeah it was it was a fabulous it was a fabulous talk and uh, yeah. super appreciated and I hope you come back to our meetup for more talks. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Love to. Once we yeah. do something cool, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Guys, everybody <laughs> Right. Happy nice Christmas, evening. everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Happy holidays. Exactly. See you. <laughs> See you later. Ciao. Bye.